FTC rules and car dealer junk fees. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Today we're addressing frequently asked questions about the definition of terms in the FTC rules. For some time now, the FTC has also been active on the rulemaking front, and because we promoted the use of the rules, we've also received a lot of questions about the definitions in these rules. So today, we're here to address those questions. In June of 2022, the FTC issued a proposed trade regulation rule affecting auto dealers. It was long overdue, friends. The proposed rule was styled to ban junk fees and commonly used bait and switch advertising tactics. We've been recommending that every car buyer get their hands on these documents and use them while negotiating in the finance office. In a very important move, the FTC stated that a dealer would have to disclose in advertising and communications a true offering price for a vehicle that would be the full cash price a consumer would pay, excluding only taxes and government fees. Let me repeat that, excluding only taxes and government fees. With this proposed rule, the FTC appears to be particularly pushing the elimination of what they refer to as junk fees, bait and switch ads, add-ons with no real value, worthless aftermarket products, mm -hmm, and new disclosures to level the playing field between dealers. A dishonest dealer attracts a customer with deceptive advertising at a low price, only to rob that customer with fees once they get there, and effectively denying an honest dealer a fair chance at conducting reasonable business with the same customer. Both the customer and the honest dealer get robbed. Now the question is, what exactly is a junk fee as defined by the FTC? The FTC defines junk fees as unfair or deceptive fees that are charged for goods or services that have little or no added value to the consumer, including goods or services that consumers would reasonably assume to be included within the overall advertised price. Right. While it might seem a little unclear who would make this interpretation and what would be necessary to defend a fee against the FTC, we think we have the answers sitting right in plain sight in the chosen language in the written rules. First, it helps to understand what a mandatory government charge is when buying a car. Purchasing a new automobile often requires paying city, county, and state sales taxes. That's mandatory, always collected by the government. There can also be an annual vehicle license tax and possibly a personal property tax depending on the state you live in. Some states also have a tire disposal fee, which is a per tire fee, including the spare that your vehicle carries. Aside from sales taxes, your local government charges other legal costs as well, such as fees associated with title, tag, and registration. These are easily defined because none of these fees are taxed on your contract as they are collected by the state you live in, not by the dealer. A fee that is taxed is not a government fee and is therefore a junk fee, as defined by the FTC. If you can't figure it out on your own, call the DMV yourself and ask them to spell it out for you penny by penny. Understanding of FTC rules can also be gained by looking at lawsuits they've already filed against dealers and dealer groups. Take Napleton, for example. In the October action, the FTC alleged that the dealer regularly advertised certified, reconditioned, or inspected cars at specific prices, but then added extra certification, reconditioning, and inspection fees that it falsely claimed consumers were required to pay. Mm -hmm. Those are very significant word choices by the FTC, falsely claimed consumers were required to pay. Right. Reconditioning and inspection costs are reasonably expected to be a part of a dealer's retail price. How many of you go to a dealer to fight fees or add-ons only to have the dealer say, everyone pays that, or it's mandatory, or it's not optional, or take it or leave it? All of these statements are all the same kind of claim, pay it or leave. They say you don't have the right to demand they are removed. The FTC says that isn't legal, and the claim for mandatory fees and add-ons is a false claim. That shouldn't surprise you, right? That the dealer would make a false claim? Ha, <laughs> they do it all too often. Just because there are laws against this behavior by dealers doesn't mean they won't do it. In fact, it is widely known that they do break the law. Yeah. As an FTC officer stated to one of our viewers who inquired about making a complaint, dealers routinely operate with one foot in illegal activity. <laughs> Back in a moment after this message from our very own Mary Jo. Hello, I am Mary Jo from the Homework Guy team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out, carefully researched for accuracy and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications about upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on our ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? 
As we mentioned, the exact verbiage used in the regulations by the FTC defines junk fees as unfair or deceptive fees that are charged for goods or services that have little or no added value to the consumer, including goods or services that consumers would reasonably assume to be included within the overall advertised price. They go on to spell out particularly fraudulent add-on products and services that provide no benefit, such as nitrogen-filled tires that contain no more nitrogen than normal air. This would prohibit dealers from charging consumers for an add-on without their clear written consent and would require any dealers to inform consumers about the price of the car without any optional add-ons. If the dealer fails to do this, they are in violation. Bottom line, if it's not a government fee, it's definitely optional. In taking these actions to write about these rules, the FTC made broad generalizations about auto dealer behavior and undertook to expand its authority under Section 5 of the FTC Act, which prohibits unfair, deceptive, or abusive practices otherwise known as UDAPs. Yeah. We can't emphasize this enough. The FTC makes it crystal clear what a transparent price is, and this is a legal requirement for dealers. They cannot decline to respond with a clear written price when you ask for an out-the-door price and instead tell you, come in and let's talk about it. They must, by law, send you a written response to your request for pricing. That's already grounds to file an FTC complaint. Sure. A dealer must disclose in advertising and communications a true offering price for a vehicle that would be the full cash price a consumer would pay, excluding only taxes and government fees. We mentioned this earlier, but it bears repeating. You must understand what a mandatory government charge is when buying a car. Typical mandatory government charges are sales tax, title transfer fees, registration and license fees. None of these fees are taxed because they are collected by the state you live in and not by the dealer. That's all there is to it. Interestingly, Google appears to be in bed with the dealers because they no longer readily supply this information when you search for it, just like they did a few short years ago. It's also fundamental to understand that dealers charge consumers a retail price, not a private party price. Exactly. Built into the retail price of the car, they are already charging you for given services already rolled into their higher retail price. Yeah. Reconditioning the vehicle, applying for title transfer and registration of the vehicle by sending the documents into the state DMV and otherwise preparing it for retail sale. Mm -hmm. For all of that, they get a retail price, not a private party price. All of it represents a service that consumers should reasonably assume to be included within the overall advertised price. Tell us then, why would you ever pay them a second time in the way of a dealer fee or document fee for providing those services? Because so many of you don't get this basic understanding of junk fees, we have compiled a list of junk fees on our website. They are available at thehomeworkguide.com. Just go there and get yeah. yourself a copy. You must not let the dealer get away with charging you these junk fees. If the fee you're seeing isn't named on the list that we have on our website and it's being taxed, it is a junk fee by the dealer and prohibited by the FTC. I also want to remind our viewers, if you happen to be on Facebook, drop by and give us a comment on a post and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com. As we've shared, it's loaded up with free resources for car buyers, and we now offer a blog post there too. For those of you who wish to show us some love with a tip, there's a super thanks button now, and there are links below the video in the description box. You can easily find them by clicking on the Read More button down below. All right, if you're new here at the Homer Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homer Gal. The Homer Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.